Thank you, Karma, for sponsoring today's video. Vincent, I hear you. I'm green. Yo, John? Nice. Did you like the lip singing part? Boy, so be I'm hanging up. No, 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 no. Okay. But for real. Guess who just contacted us? Uh, who? Microsoft. Microsoft? How? Look, so apparently they're sending us their latest next gen console. Oh, we're getting Xbox Series X? Well, I don't understand because there's literally like no PlayStation 5s. Yeah, no. And literally. No GPU on the market. I mean, I don't know what we're gonna do for next week's video. Dude, finally reviewing. Yeah, well, it's about time because I don't know what we're gonna review. Wait, you know what? I'll, I'll call you back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Xbox? <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. What the f People of the internet, this here is the Xbox Series S. As of now, it's the only new gen console available in stores, and for the price, I decided to grab one and see if it's even worth the money. So you can expect an unboxing, my thoughts on this new design, a quick setup of the console, what gaming is like, and if you should be worried about the digital storage. The box is nothing too heavy, in fact it comes in at 7.4 pounds and it's very small for a box that contains a new gen console. As you can see, we have the Fortnite and Rocket League version and by ripping these Apple-like seals, we get to reveal the actual box. Nothing too fancy, some simple information on the side and some more seals so we can open this up, laying it flat on a surface. The first thing you'll get to see is the Xbox console itself. And like always, the best feeling about a newly fresh console is being able to take it out out of these soft plastic bags. Underneath its compartment, we got a quick setup guide where apparently we are now able to complete it by using a phone. The small top compartment store the manual, a 2.0 HDMI cable since we can only output 1440p, a simple power cord with no transformer, and on the right, taking it out of a similar soft plastic bag, a newly redesigned controller. The same controller you will find in the Xbox Series X, with included batteries of course. Although I do wish Microsoft would have included a headset as they did with the 360 in the past. I did happen to buy the very last unit on the shelf, but if your local Best Buy is out of stock, Karma has been a long-term sponsor of ours because we use their Chrome extension to shop all the time. It is also an app and it ensures you never miss a price drop, a coupon code, or an item in stock when shopping online. It allows me to stay up to date with my tech and make sure I get the best prices for any holiday event. Last year, it allowed me to find cool accessories for our videos at fair prices when I was shopping for example at The Source. By clicking on the link down below, you can download Karma for free and add it as your Chrome extension. With it, you can visit your favorite stores, find an item of your choice like an Xbox Series S and click on the button slider to save your item. You can select when you want to be notified and what list you want to add the item to. I do get notifications via email or mobile push to know when my saved product goes on sale or comes back in stock. I've personally been creating lists when it comes to buying products for the videos so I can organize all my tech and help with impulsive purchases. At checkout, it is able to automatically scan the web for coupon codes, but note that this is a special feature only available on the computer. And when shopping at select retail stores, Karma gives cash back to you and a good cause. You can download Karma for free using the link in the description down below. The coolest thing about this console though I'd say is the design. Overall, it is 60% smaller than the Xbox Series X which means that it can fit anywhere you'd like it to fit, including a backpack if you are trying to bring this places, or your setup if you want to keep things minimal. Overall, making this the smallest Xbox ever. I of course love the contrast the black fan grill produces, I like the sharp edges, the attention to detail this has, but most importantly for me, the fact that as a standalone unit, it can sit vertically and horizontally. Seeing that this has quite a lot of exhaust grills, overheating shouldn't be a problem. In the back, you will find an Ethernet port, a couple of 3.1 USB ports, an HDMI port, a storage expansion, and power. For the cable, of 
course, because the actual power button is on the front, along with a sync button to sync your controller and a 3.1 USB port next to it. Pressing the sync button on the controller will complete the sync to the console, and this is by far my favorite feature about Xbox consoles in general, the controller. Xbox controllers have by far the best ergonomics. This one fits great in my hand, I love the nice texture material the grip and the triggers have, as well as the new D-pad Microsoft recently redesigned. For those who have never held one before, expect great button travel whether it's the triggers and buttons, as well as great thumb placement making it easier in my opinion in games such as Call of Duty. Oh, and yes, it's USB-C. The setup is super easy, has a great minimal UI that I very much like. Here you can set up your language, your Wi-Fi, your location and download a few updates to get things ready. Once the console restarts interesting enough, you can continue the setup with the Xbox mobile app. Now I'd rather do it on the console, signing in by either creating an account or using an existing one and going through a bit of the legality regarding data, leveling up your gaming experience and so on. My security preferences are always the same for me including my signing preference, although because I signed in on the wrong account, I won't be redeeming my bundles packs until I sign in with the right account. The same thing goes with Game Pass but after choosing the right time zone, you might want to use energy savings instead of standby. As tested, there is quite a bit of a difference in terms of energy consumption when in sleep mode. With this, I suggest you update your content automatically at all times and tweak your TV for the best settings. After updating your controller, you will finally get to enjoy the new dashboard. Just don't forget to claim your gifts with the right account. The signing UI is super nice and simple. As expected, it very much translates super well into the main dashboard. We still have those awesome nostalgic sounds from the Xbox 360 when going around and the user experience overall is pretty much self-explanatory. In my case, I did download a few apps like Netflix, YouTube and The Zone from the Microsoft Store. You can take a look at these within your games and apps library and because I find it super convenient to be able to play any games I desire at such low price, I of course subscribed for Game Pass, which is accessible through your Xbox home button along with the store, your notifications, volume and the search bar. This whole section overall has been designed super nicely. The tabs are very well thought out, including your profile, your Xbox friends, the good old nostalgic Xbox parties, game activity and even the capture and share feature. Through your home tab, you can access your settings if you wish to do so as well. And it's super nice seeing that Microsoft took very similar features from Windows and brought them to navigating menus as such. Overall, a beautifully well-designed UI providing a great user experience in my opinion. Now every game available for the Series X will be found on the Series S. Note that there is a list of games that outputs lower resolutions on the S to achieve 120 frames per second. But do remember that the Xbox Series S only outputs 1440p and not native 4K, which in my opinion is not that big of a problem, mainly because if we compare games such as Rocket League for example, 4K resolution compared to 1440p isn't that much of a big deal. There is a difference when we pixel peep, but in terms of gaming far away from the TV, the noticeable differences are non-existent. Unlike the PlayStation 5 though, this does have a quick resume feature, meaning that you can hop from game to game without having to reload the entire application and lose your progress. And this is all due to their new Xbox Velocity architecture leveraged by their new CPUs, who aren't the same in terms of speed when we compare the Xbox Series S and the X, which explains the difference in resolution, and it also explains the ability to have AMD FreeSync, although this is just overall a feature that the PlayStation 5 doesn't have. I'm just super happy that for the price, Microsoft was still able to avoid screen tiering when your monitor or TV's refresh rate isn't similar to the game's frame rate. I'm almost ashamed to say that Sony doesn't have this. At least all consoles still get an auto low latency mode to benefit from fast paced input games, but it honestly doesn't change the fact that how great the gaming experience on this console is, mainly when knowing that games are booted on NVMe SSDs which are very similar to what we have on our custom PCs and gaming laptops, so the boot times will be faster and because you need to load fewer pixels, the quick resume feature is slightly faster on the Xbox Series S compared to the Xbox Series X. However, this small little guy gets quite hot although it's quiet.
and digitally it provides a much better gaming experience, but that is mainly due to Game Pass. Game Pass is basically gaming and budget coming together. With its subscription, you can pretty much access to well over 100 games to download and play on your Xbox like if you own the game itself. Literally, it's like if you went to Best Buy, bought the game and came back home. You just can't sell them back of course, but for me it's a feature that makes so much sense. For $17 a month, the Ultimate Pass offers so much, including Xbox Live, a library of top EA titles on PC and console, as well as access to Xbox Game Studio titles the same day as they release so I pretty much have access to any game I want when I want. Except there is a catch, the storage. You see, 512 gigabytes of SSD is not enough if you want to install more than five to six games. On top of that, if you plan on installing Warzone and Vanguard at the same time, well, guess what? That's all you can afford in terms of storage, mainly because at 512 gigabytes, you only have access to about 360 gigs. There are ways around this and it all starts by buying a separate hard drives. The only struggle with this I'd say is the fact that you only need to move the games to the main NVMe if you want to play optimized Xbox games. There is an alternative but it is expensive. Using the storage port in the back doesn't come in cheap since with current prices it's almost worth it waiting for the Xbox Series X to be in stock. Overall though, moving games are a lot faster, cheaper and better than having to re-download them. So I recommend you stick with the external hard drive. In reality though, for someone like myself, it's never been an issue since I don't play more than 3 games at the time. The cool thing is that even though we don't get 4K resolutions when gaming, in the entertainment department, this is no issue. Netflix, The Zone, and all your favorite streaming services can deliver 4K provided they do so. And the fun thing is that this console for the price still delivers Dolby Digital, DTS, Atmos, and True HD, which of course overall supports HDR content. So F1 fans, you'll be good when it comes to watching the F1 show on Netflix. Just don't forget that if you want to connect it to a soundbar, you need to do it via HDMI ARC since we don't get an optical input with this console. Regardless, for the price, I think this is a no-brainer. I am considering switching my gaming platform of choice to this. I love the PC and also the PS5, but the Game Pass is honestly just awesome. The Series S provides such a great gaming experience for the price, mainly if you are on a budget. I'd rather get all the titles I want, when I want them, including Xbox Live for $17 a month. I might be able to let go of my custom PC to finally switch my workflow to a Mac and just keep the PlayStation 5 for exclusive titles such as Spider-Man. I really don't mind gaming at 1440p at the moment. I recommend grabbing one and always buying from a store with great return policy in case it doesn't suit you. I hope you all enjoyed this review and if you made it till the end, leave a hashtag Xbox so I can know. See you all soon, take care. Oh,